Yo, what's going on, Serpo Squad? Tanner here, and I'm back with another Terrarium build. I started this one nearly two years ago and never completed it. One thing led to another, and it kept getting lower on my list of priorities. However, I'm tired of seeing a half completed project in my room. Let's get it done. This terrarium will be built in a huge container. 28 inches tall and 11 inches wide to be specific. I estimate that it would hold around 10 gallons or 44 liters if completely full. With such a large container, I wanted to do something special. My initial thought was essentially just to make a large terrarium complete with a living wall. After letting it sit for a few years though, I decided to go in a different direction. Anyway, back in 2018, I started the project by marking the outside to create a guide for silicone placement. After that, I cleaned the inside with rubbing alcohol. As I've explained in past videos, this will help create the optimal surface for silicone to adhere to. Once the alcohol gassed off, I used a brush to paint silicone within the guides I drew on the outside. Here's a closer look. I let the silicone cure for a few hours and scraped off any excess. To foam this one, I'll use Great Stuff Multipurpose Black Expanding Foam. I applied this over all the areas where I put silicone. Normally I don't apply the silicone prior to the foam because I don't think it's necessary, but it can help the foam stick better. Since the container is curved, I felt that it would be necessary for optimal results. I let the foam cure overnight prior to the next step. Like you've seen me do countless times, I went around with a razor scraper and carved the foam. I did a portion of this back in 2018 and completed the rest a few days back. In doing so, I mainly wanted to manipulate the shape of the foam to allow for proper stone placement. I also wanted to expose all of the spongy interior of the foam for water absorption purposes. There's no need to add detail because the foam will be completely covered later on. After carving everything, this is what I ended up with. To escape this setup, I'm going to use exclusively Oko Dragonstone. I think this will be the perfect stone for my new vision with this setup. Plus I had some on hand. I'll also be using a Zoomed Micro Pump 104 to move the water. What I did was put the pump in the container and cut a slit into the foam to conceal the cord. This also helped keep the pump situated. From there I could scape it with the stones. I placed the two largest ones near the bottom of the container being mindful of the directional nature of the striations. One of the stones was wedged firmly in the foam, but the other was loose. I secured the loose one with a few dabs of silicone. This process was repeated until all of the stones were secure. With everything in place, I let the silicone cure for 24 hours. After that time, the container could be turned to an upright position. Before moving to the next step, I have to trim the vinyl tube. I left it long to begin with because I wasn't sure how tall I'd be able to make the waterfall with the stones I had. Anyway, I cut it down to a more appropriate length and tucked it into the back of the foam. Then I filled the bottom of the container with water to test the functionality of the pump. I let it rip and I liked what I saw. For this one, I really just wanted a gentle trickle effect, which is exactly what I got. To conceal the foam and create a good growing surface for the moss, I'm going to use geotextile fabric. It will wick some of the water and help retain moisture on the background. To start, I stuffed a few segments in the waterfall while the pump was running. I did this first to ensure that the fabric wouldn't ruin the effect. From there, I drained the container and got some hot glue. I used this to attach the fabric to the remainder of the background. I simply put down some glue and press the fabric into it. This will all be hidden later and doesn't need to look perfect. Again, it's being attached simply just to serve a function. Once that was good to go, I removed the markings from the outside of the container. Now onto the plants. For this one, I'm primarily going to use moss. I have a few including badge moss, Hypno moss, hair cap moss, and java moss. A lot of these patches can be wedged within the crevices, but for those that can't, I'll utilize stainless steel wire that's been cut and bent into clips. 
I started by wedging the hair cap moss between the rocks near the top of the container. Next, I pinned a sheet of hypno moss to the background with the clips. I repeated these steps throughout the entire setup until the background was covered. Like before, some were wedged in place and others were pinned. Also, in case you're wondering, stainless steel wires are fine to leave in the setup long term. I reserved all of the java moss for the water portion of the setup. Some of the others could have acclimated to these conditions, but I wanted to skip that process and move straight to something I knew would work immediately. Once the setup was fully planted, I gave the moss a spray down to prevent it from drying out. Now we can move on to the aquatic portion of this setup. I use coarse filter media to conceal the pump and keep it from becoming clogged. I stuck a few of these in front of the pump. With that addressed, let's move on to the substrate. Although I don't plant the water portion of the setup, I used a combination of sea chem fluorite and fluval stratum in case I ever do. I'll also include some pool filter sand. To add the substrates, I started by putting a cardboard divider in the bottom. First I filled the outside portion with sand, then the inside with planted tank substrate. The divider was removed. I used a brush to even things out and capped everything off with more sand. After all of that, the setup was filled with water. The pump was turned on once more and thankfully the trickle still worked properly. However, the setup is missing a final detail. I don't know about you, but I always pictured this design to have some floating plants. As such, I added Frogbit and Salvinia Minima to complete the setup. Here it is, the giant moss strip wall terrarium. I'm so glad to finally have this one completed after nearly two years. I hate having unfinished work lay idle and I was really tired of seeing this one in the corner of the animal room. Had I finished it when I initially started though, I don't think it would have turned out this well. In a large container like this, you may think I should have added a lot of elements. That's what I would have done originally, but once I got to work the other day, I knew this design would be more dramatic if I kept everything simple. That's why I chose not to add any plants other than moss to the background and why I didn't plant the water feature. By using very few elements overall in such a big container, I think the terrarium and landscape actually look much larger than they really are. Having other plants or hardscape elements would have detracted from this in my opinion. The main challenges I faced with this build came from the size of the container. Usually I'd say that bigger terrariums are easier to work with, but that wasn't the case with this one. Although I can stick my arm through the hole, adding materials was a challenge because of how tall it is. Try applying foam or silicone in a space like this, not the easiest task in the world. The other challenge was filming around distortions created by the glass. The glass is almost a half inch thick and has inconsistencies. In person and from far away, the distortion is very minimal. 
However, when you go to film close-ups or specific tasks, it's hard to convey things clearly through the lens of a camera. Regardless, I think the terrarium turned out extremely well, and I'm ecstatic to finally have it completed. I'm curious what you think about it though. Let me know your thoughts on the completed project down in the comments. As always, I really hope you enjoyed this one and learned something new. Until next time, Surfer Squad, take care and peace.